Hi, how are you? In this lecture, we will discuss the usefulness of sociological theories. Sociological theories help us to understand the social world, but some theories are better or more useful than others, and we want to have the most useful theories. Two elements determine how useful a theory is, namely truth and information. The first element, truth, is intuitive and quite easy to understand. But the second one, information, is more tricky and often overlooked. Let's start with truth first. A useful sociological theory is a theory that is true, not false. Truth, however, is not a matter of yes or no. It's a matter of degree. Some theories are close to the truth, as the predictions are often confirmed. Other theories may be confronted with many empirical findings that are not in line with the theory. In this context, sociologists speak of empirical success, the degree of empirical confirmation of theory. The more a theory corresponds to reality, so the more it is successful empirically, the more useful it is in explaining observations and accurately making predictions. What do we mean with this? If we go back to the theory of the relative age effect, we can assess its empirical success by looking at what is subsumed under the proposition. There are three things subsumed under the proposition. First, there are two observations which are explained by the proposition on the relative age effect. And second, there is one hypothesis derived from the proposition. And this hypothesis can be true or false, but it appears that sociological studies consistently find support for this hypothesis. Overall, when focusing only on the summary provided in this figure, the theory on the relative age effect receives much support. It's very successful empirically. If theories were only judged by their empirical success, by their truth, however, one would get theories that are actually useless. And this may sound strange, but let's consider an extreme example. Suppose someone comes up with a theory that People born in January may or may not be selected in the top sports team. This idea is true. But the problem is that it's always true. It's an example of a tautology. It's a statement which is true and at the same time not useful at all. So what's missing here? Why is this not a good scientific theory? The missing element is information. The theoretical statement, people born in January may or may not be selected in the top sports teams, is not at all informative. Scientists are interested in theories that are not only true, but also informative. Hence, it's also important to look at information. Information is not a matter of yes or no, it's also a matter of degree. And scientists say that the higher the information content of a theory, the more useful that theory is. So what are informative theories? And how do you make theories more informative? Let's take a closer look. Suppose we want to develop a good sociological theory, which predicts if married couples will divorce or not, and if so, when. Proposition 1 argues that couples will or will not divorce within 10 years after marriage. This proposition is a tautology. It's always true, because it does not exclude any possibility in reality. There are two ways to make this theory more informative. You can make the theory more precise, and you can broaden the scope of the theory. Information content depends on the degree of theoretical precision and theoretical scope of theory. Proposition 2 increases the theoretical precision. It states very precisely that no couple will divorce within 10 years after marriage. That's an informative idea, because it can be wrong. In other words, it can be falsified. Thus, theoretical precision relates to the degree to which the theory excludes possibilities of what could happen with respect to a particular case. P1 does not exclude anything, it cannot be falsified, but P2 can be wrong, which is good. Proposition 3 increases the theoretical scope. It makes the theory applicable to a wider range of phenomena. Whereas P2 remains silent about what happens to couples after they have been married for 10 years, P3 very explicitly states that after 15 years of marriage, everyone will get a divorce. Hence, theoretical scope refers to the degree 
to which the theory is applicable to a wider range of cases, a phenomena, population, settings. P3 has a broader scope than P2. Here you see how the three propositions lead to very different predictions and outcomes. P1 states that couple, couples will or will not divorce within 10 years after marriage, and because it's a tautology, it will always be true. This is the least informative proposition. P2 states that couples do not divorce within 10 years after marriage. It's very precise, but the scope is restricted. Um, and P3 states that couples do not divorce within 10 years after marriage, but all of them eventually will be divorced when they are married for 15 years. That's very precise and it has a very broad scope. And this is the most informative, most useful proposition. So useful sociological theories are therefore theories that are in line with reality and also informative, meaning that they are very precise and cover a wider range of phenomena. As sociologists, we want to understand social phenomena. We want to answer theoretical questions. But the theories we develop are not always good. Some theories are just not useful because they are not true. They are not empirically successful. But even theories that are true may not turn out useful. The reason is that true theories may be pure tautological, not saying anything that can be wrong. Useful theories are theories that are exciting, in other words. Theories that can be applied to many different things and that can be falsified and wrong. The best sociological theories are theories that are empirically successful and highly informative. They give you an incredible power to understand the social world. Okay, thanks.